the Pokemon Nintendo Direct. We had a Nintendo Direct focused solely on the worldwide phenomenon that is Pokemon today as I'm recording Tuesday, June 6th. There were a lot of rumors going into this and some high hopes, myself included in this camp, that this would be when we finally see what the Switch version of Pokemon would be. There were rumors there would be Pokemon Stars and we get a remade version or an extended version of the original Pokemon Sun and Moon games. That's what I was really hoping for. Or maybe something completely different. Maybe the fabled MMORPG Pokemon game that everyone has always dreamed of. But in typical Nintendo fashion, who, while I love them, they've hurt me over and over and over again, we did not get any of that. We got no hint or no indication of any mainline Pokemon coming to the Nintendo Switch. Instead, they started off with Pokemon Tournament DX. Now this game came out in the Japanese arcades in 2015 and last year to the Wii U, and it's basically Pokemon meets Tekken, where you get to take some of the best Pokemon or your favorite characters and battle it out in a 3D arena using all the incredible moves and strategy to become victorious and become the very best. Now while this game was cool, it's another Wii U port, which is fine because not as many people played the Wii U, and it's coming out on September 22nd, which is exciting because we're going to be getting a fix of Pokemon, maybe not what we desired, but something this year and coming pretty soon. I mean, a few months away. September will be here before we know it. And it comes with a few new features. For example, some new fighters like Decidueye from Pokemon Sun and Moon and Litten and Poplio, the other starters, are going to be support characters. You'll be able to choose multiple Pokemon and have up to three in a battle. I mean, there's big online focus. They really focused on the portability of the Switch. And the whole video is basically this guy traveling and meeting and getting in the line of sight of other Pokemon trainers as it happens in the regular game and starting this battle. And it is a good trailer and it shows the power of the Switch as for these Pokemon battles, but wouldn't it have been so much better if it was Pokemon Stars? I mean, come on, please, something. So like I said, while we did want this Pokemon mainline series for the Switch, it is good to see that the Pokemon company is jumping on pretty quickly and we don't have to wait long for this because hopefully that means they'll get their feet wet on Pokemon Tournament and then sooner or later, we're gonna get this Pokemon that we've all desired. Now, in addition to that, and at the end of the trailer, which also is kind of fuels my frustration and anger, is they announced Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. And they are coming to, you guessed it, the Nintendo 3DS. Not the Nintendo Switch, but the Nintendo 3DS. Now I know you don't want to leave behind this market, but why could you not put it on the Switch? I know I'm just dreaming here and asking is somebody who just desires this, but with the hype and the popularity of Nintendo right now on the Switch, I think getting a Pokemon out there soon would capitalize and just make it even more incredible of a package. Now, I don't know if they're worried about supply and demand and not being able to supply as many Switches, especially if a new Pokemon game comes out, but I really think that this is a big missed opportunity. But I do have a theory, and this is kind of a spoiler warning for my E3 predictions, but I am thinking that they have this Nintendo Direct so they can get this news out of the way. They want to offload these Pokemon Tournament and this Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon and some of these other games. So when it comes to E3, they can focus on the big news. And we're going to get the big Megaton bomb that there is a version coming to the Nintendo Switch. And it's going to be amazing and beautiful and everything that we could have hoped for. Now I know that's me uh, pie in the sky, hoping and dreaming, but... I still want to give Nintendo the benefit of the doubt and hope that they still are holding this one card up their sleeve. But anyway, back to Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. This is basically Pokemon Sun and Moon with some added features, new perspective, new stories, new Pokemon. They showed Solgaleo and Lunala, the two Pokemon on the cover of Sun and Moon respectively, and it looks like they have a new either fusion form or melded form or ultimate form, and they look fused with Necrozma, another legendary Pokemon, which you can see here. So we should be in for a treat, especially for those who love Sun and Moon or maybe never jumped into it. This looks like a really cool version to kind of get into. They, they didn't reveal too much more. They showed little clips here and there, like Mimikyu has a new Z-move, and there's some Pikachu trainer with some awesome busts that I would love to buy. But they didn't really say too much about the new features that would maybe make Pokemon Sun and Moon fans come back, especially if they played it to completion or completed the Pokedex. Will there be reason to jump back in to Pokemon Sun and Moon so quickly after these games have already come out? And lastly, they announced that Pokemon Gold and Silver will be coming to the Nintendo 3DS Virtual Console 
with all the modern features of link trading and link battling wirelessly and being able to interact with Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow with their time capsule feature and also being able to take advantage of Pokemon Bank and being able to upload these Pokemon to the more modern versions. Once again, this is awesome, but where's the Switch? <laughs> That's all I'm ever going to say. Where is the Switch? And that's really all they talked about in this Pokemon Nintendo Direct. It was eight minutes long, in and out, very quick, to the point. And I'm hoping, like I said, that this is just an appetizer to the main meal that is going to be E3. Next week is going to be interesting because I will be in LA all week. So I'm going to try and post videos and impressions, maybe podcasts throughout the week, and try and get a regular show. So I'll, I'll keep you guys updated with what it's going to be like, but it's really going to depend on internet and my situation and how the events go to see how the show gets up. But I'm gonna try my best to have it posted on time or maybe get you throughout the week. But until then, I would love to hear from you. Send me an email at adam at thegamersadvocate.com. Follow me on Twitter at Adam Bankhurst. Comment below after you subscribe. Find ways to get in touch and let me know what you wanna see at E3. Let me know the games you are most interested in and I would love to send you a personal video or show you what the future of your favorite titles are. Maybe I can do some live streams while I'm there on Facebook Live or Periscope and show you the show floor and run around and give you the E3 experience from someone who is actually on the floor. Because I'm going to be like a kid in a candy shop. This has been a dream of mine, like I said, for years and years and years. And I would love for you to be a part of it. So send me your questions. Send me your thoughts. Send me your predictions. Send me anything that you want me to see there. And let's make this E3 one to remember. So once again, send me an email at adam at thegamersadvocate.com. Follow me on Twitter at Adam Bankhurst or the Gamers Advocate at Gamers Advocate. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to us, review us on iTunes, and help more people find the Gamers Advocates so we can continue to grow and do all the things that we would always want to. So in closing, I want to thank you once again for joining me this week on the Gamers Advocate. And I can't wait to bring you all the news and incredible things coming out of E3 2017. So I hope you have a great day and or night. And once again, thank you.